Hello, my name is uh, Dale Swiger, and I am doing my individual oral presentation on the Thinking Outside the Box feature about Jorgen Vig Nudstorp, the CEO of LEGO. Um, the reason that I chose to do the presentation on this feature is because, uh, you know, I really like stories about uh, aging, struggling companies that have overcame the odds and adapted to the current market uh, rather than, you know, being stuck in their ways and uh, like getting lost in the past. A uh, quick summary of the piece. Uh, in the mid-1990s, the LEGO company began to struggle because of uh, the rising popularity of video games and computers. Uh, I actually did further research into the uh, company's struggles, and uh, during this time, uh, they had reached the end of their growth cycle because, you know, there's so, only so many stores in the world, and they had already placed uh, all their toys on the shelves of all of them. And as, at the same time, the company continued to triple the number of toys that they offered, and sales didn't actually go anywhere. Uh, the bi business continued to lose millions of dollars a year despite attempts to grow uh, through, you know, Legoland theme parks. Uh, the theme parks actually turned out to be unprofitable, but the business continued to put more money into them anyway. Then in 2004, Jorgen Vig Nordstorp was appointed the new CEO of the company. He was actually the first uh, CEO to come from outside the Christiansen family who founded the company, you know, way back in 1932. Uh, the previous CEO uh, was the, actually the grandson's founder. Uh, he was quoted saying, maybe I'm not the right person to lead this company into the next generation. Uh, to me, it was actually kind of a courageous act in its own right, as he was able to identify himself as a weakness and was willing to step down for the good of the company. After he was appointed his position, uh, Nutstorp began the process of changing the company's direction uh, to, do, to do this. He had to shift the emphasis of the company from nurturing the child uh, to actually making money for the company. He sold off the theme parks and began to seek feedback on how to improve the product to meet market's de demand. Uh, he began, uh, you know, thinking outside the box, like the feature, by using uh, less traditional routes to test their products, using, uh, you know, adult Lego users instead of children, like most companies would for toy products. He said that the adults would be better at articulating the toy's strengths and weaknesses, uh, and young children might have you know, a little bit more difficulty expressing uh, their findings. So uh, he, he then expanded the business into the movie and video game industry, you know, trying to trying to uh, gain that technological advantage or, or join other companies that were there. Uh, this actually attributed uh, to the company's profits. And by 2015 alone, the profits for the company totaled over 500 million. Next, we move on to the company's SWOT analysis at the time that Nudstorp took over. Let's start by identifying the company's existing strengths. Lego was a very well-known entity at the time with an existing customer base. It is especially well-known by parents and is still seen as a go-to gift for children. The Lego product already has a home on millions of shelves around the world. They just need new avenues to grow the brand outside of physical sales as they had already plateaued. Now moving on to the company's weaknesses. A glaring weakness was taken care of right off the bat by Nudstorp, and that was the Legoland theme parks. He did well by determining that they were a sunk cost and that putting more money into them was a bad idea and turned them into an asset instead by liquidating them and uh, just getting money out of them. Another weakness that was easy for Nudstorp to identify was the lack of a technological presence in the market, where technology was a new craze at the time, and still is. Another weakness was the years of somewhat poor management where the company had failed to adapt to the new market trends. This was taken care of, you know, the old CEO realized that he needed to step down in order to build a better future for the company. This brings us to the opportunities for the company. One of the opportunities is new company management. Allowing Nedstorp to step in as CEO and bring with him fresh ideas really turned the company around. The company was able to identify the that pointing the company in a new direction was vital to its success. Not many companies are able to see this and can get stuck in their old ways and be adverse to change. Another huge opportunity for the company was to join their competition in the technology race. It took more time for Lego, but it now has many popular video games that are available on several platforms. And what turned out to be an even bigger success, uh, though, has been Lego on the big screen. To date, the first Lego movie made them 496.1 million at the box office. Lego Batman 312 million and Lego Movie Part 2 191 million just as examples. is uh, attributed a lot to their revenue in those years. 
This brings me to another huge opportunity for the company, and that is their partnership with other entertainment brands like Batman, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and several others. Partnering with these movies was a great avenue to promote the Lego brand and drive up sales at the time when the movie came out. I've already discussed kind of most of the threats to the company, like the rising popularity of video games and technology, as Nudstorp found a way to turn these into strengths. So. The next question posed by the feature is a bit more on the marketing side. It asks how different stores are marketing different Lego products to today's young people, you know, how they kind of turned around. I went online and took a look at three some of the most popular retail stores. Walmart, Target, and Amazon. It was interesting that each retailer, you know, kind of choose uh, a different marketing strategy to sell the Lego product. On the left, we have a Walmart ad. In this ad, it can be seen that the targeting audience would be a younger age group, you know, possibly between five and eight years old. This is actually a picture that I found online is included in a physical flyer, one that might be, you know, more accessible to children of the five to eight years old age group as most of them wouldn't go online or have access to online. So it shows some of the simpler sets and another younger child playing with Legos. You know, the children can see, you know, themselves playing with Legos as well as another kid their age is playing with them. Uh, the picture on the right is actually a screenshot taken directly from Target site. It actually allows users to select the exact age group that they are looking for. The site also places a huge emphasis on themed Lego sets like Harry Potter and Lego movies. So a very, uh, they're targeting specific uh, age groups and uh, finding the exact toy for them. On this slide, I included a few screenshots that are located on Amazon's website. In the first screenshot, you can see the implementation of the technological side that LEGO has now put an emphasis on. And the sets uh, that's on this website actually include a interactive phone app. So that's pretty cool. The, the rest of the site's ads are also very theme-based with sets from Marvel, Minecraft, and Jurassic World. Uh, these ads seem to be targeting an older age group, ones that are children possibly over the ages of 10. This makes sense as Amazon is a strictly an online retailer, and this would be the age groups that would actually have access to the internet. These are all great examples of how Lego is targeting specific market segments rather than just filling shelves with as many toys as possible as they had done in the past. They have been able to identify exactly what products each age group tends to prefer, and they have successfully leveraged their relationship with other movies and media avenues to a more appeal to today's youth. I did also notice that every website had an entire page that was dedicated to just Legos. It really shows how much of a turnaround that the company has went through. Lego is really a great example of a company that was willing to make a tough or risky decision to stay afloat in the business world. You know, they were willing to accept change and establish new management. They showed a willingness to let go of a sunk cost, uh, the example of the theme parks. They really thought outside the box by exploring new ways to test their product. They jumped on new opportunities by partnering with other firms in the entertainment industry. And possibly, possibly the best move of all was adapting to their competition in a new market, you know, tech, the technology side. I really enjoyed being able to do some research into how the Lego company was able to turn around and climb back to the top of the toy industry, you know, and be able to overcome the technology craze, like uh, so many companies in the 90s had such a hard time doing. Uh, so thank you for uh, listening to my presentation.